Frank Habineza. Dr. Frank Habineza entered Rwandan politics in 2009 by publicly declaring the formation of the opposition Democratic Green Party of Rwanda as alternative to the dominant ruling Rwanda Patriotic Front of President. He is also the president of the African Greens Federation, a coalition of 30 political parties and movements across the African continent. Dr. Habineza was born in Uganda in 1977, where his parents were staying as political refugees. He has contributed so many things to African civil society, but he resigned from all civil society since he joined the opposition activities. Um, in 2010, he was forced to leave his country and sought refuge in Sweden. And he went back in 2012 and continued his democratic struggle and finally managed to get the Democratic Green Party of Rwanda officially registered 2013. Please welcome Frank Habineza. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me uh, to be here with you today. And uh, we are very uh, pleased for uh, all the organizers of uh, this uh, wonderful Congress. Uh, as the uh, presenter has said, I come from Rwanda. Uh, it's a, a country from East Africa, uh, both East and Central Africa. Um, Rwanda, most of you know it uh, because of the genocide. Uh, but of course, uh, we have, the country is moving forward after 20 years. Uh, we've been working very hard to establish uh, democracy. Uh, of course, as you've known, after the genocide, uh, the party which uh, stopped the genocide was a revolutionary movement, and uh, it's been difficult for that party to become a democratic party because uh, they were military men. Uh, so uh, because of uh, the conditions, uh, lack of uh, democracy, uh, lack of uh, proper justice system, uh, problems with the media, the civil society, uh, we said, well, we needed to have a political party which would take care of our country, the natural resources, but also take care of our democracy and make sure that we have respect of human rights. So we established this party in 2009, and uh, it was not easy, of course. We were beaten physically in the Congress uh, where we had more than 1,500 uh, physically beaten by people even who had uh, even pistols, and uh, some of our people were arrested. Uh, others, of course, were put in prison. Others were forced in exile. And the worst was in 2010, when we were trying to run for elections, when my deputy president, Andreka Gwarisreka, was assassinated. It was very horrible. He was beheaded. And uh, yeah, so by that time, I was forced, of course, to leave the country and for, go to exile in Sweden, where I stayed for two years. And of course, with support from all the Greens all over the world, the Australian Greens, the Swedish Greens, and different governments, uh, I was able to go back in 2012, and we finally got our party registered in 2013. The party has been uh, trying to do a lot of work as the only registered opposition party, and uh, the president, uh, current president, has finished uh, officially two term limits uh, for 14 years, and uh, two years ago they said, well, that's not time over, he wants to have another term, and we said no. Uh, Mr. President, uh, your term is over. You have to respect the Constitution. Uh, we took our case to the Parliament. Uh, it did not work. We took it to the Supreme Court. We had a case. But in the case, we won something uh, because we, they wanted to have open term limit for the President to be there forever, like in Zimbabwe it is. Um, we said no, we need to, to maintain two term limits. Also, we needed to reduce the term limit from uh, seven years to five years. So in the final draft of the Constitution, they accepted to reduce it from seven years to five years, which was a plus of what we were asking. And then uh, they also accepted to uh, maintain the true term limits in the Constitution, but they included another article which allows the, the current president to stand for another seven years term and two more other five years term. So basically, it was a win and lose situation. Uh, but we said, well, if this is the case, we are not going to give up. We are going to stand for elections to make sure that uh, all the people who voted for the no and the referendum, they, they are there, and we know there are many, 
and we know well, we're standing for democracy, we're standing for social justice, we're standing for human rights respect, for media freedoms, we said we will have a chance to win this election. So the party confirmed me as a candidate two weeks ago. <laughs> and uh, the election is in August, and we know this election is a very important three months remaining because we here in Africa, it's a big chance uh, for us to win. One of the progressive people uh, whom we're emulating, our friend Dr. Iman Nur from Egypt, who tried to stand against Mubarak and all difficult circumstances, uh, you know, uh, he, won, he almost won, but um, the, the system was so difficult for him to be elected, and he was put in prison, uh, he's now in exile. So we have first such kind of situations in Rwanda, we hope that in this election, we'll have a chance to win, that you will stand with us, so that we don't become like Imanul, who, who, who left election and go into prison, spent there for five years. I hope you understand that I, even if I go to prison, you continue to be standing with me, so that uh, I know that you are, we are family, we are together, <laughs> that you will not ignore me. Yeah. 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 But you not abandon us like you have stood with us in this struggle. I hope you continue standing with us because uh, it's a struggle for human rights, struggle for dignity, a struggle for protection of our natural resources, a struggle for peace because we are in the Great Lakes region, a, country, a, a region where it's full of conflicts in the Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, we have a lot of people there and so many deaths, uh, rapes for women, and you've seen in Burundi the political conflict there. You, even in Uganda, there have been, there have been problems in northern Uganda. So we are in a, a place where they are, we are prone to civil conflict, to, to wars. And so if there is good news in Rwanda, if a green candidate wins in Rwanda, it means there will be peace in the whole region. And we have a big chance to win. I thank you very much, and I hope you'll be with me. Thank you very much.